Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTU. In this video, I'll be discussing about make or buy decision. Now, make or buy decision involves vertical integration and dependence on supplier, right? Making means making in-house, producing in-house. Buying decision involves buying from the external vendor, external supplier, right? Outsourcing. So vertical integration, there are advantages of producing in-house or there are also advantages of producing from supplier as well as several disadvantages. So the advantages of producing in-house includes that you have less dependence on supplier in cases when, when suppliers go on strike, in cases where there is a shortage of material in the market, in cases where there is a high demand of your product and you want immediate material you are not going to depend on suppliers because you know that you are the one who is also a supplier for your own uh, product and you are producing, you're getting your raw material from your own facility and you're producing it yourself. So you don't, you don't rely on the external vendors for supplying uh, material. So for example, if you are um, publishing books and you also manufacture pages, but you have to rely on the external vendor to provide trees so you can convert trees into papers. And if there is a shortage of jungles or if there is a shortage of material, if there's a shortage of labor in the market that can provide you um, uh, the, the, the designated amount or number of trees or you know, wood, you know, then you are stuck. If there is a short, if there is a strike of the, uh, the transportation and they cannot ship you, then you are stuck. So there, is, there are many ways you can get stuck from suppliers or if suppliers can raise the prices of their raw material, then you're also stuck. So in a vertical integration, when you are your own supplier and you're, you're also a manufacturer, you have a less dependence on suppliers. So anything that happens, you have your own material. You don't have to rely on them, right? So your flow of material is smoother because you can have it whenever you want. It's not like that you have a shortage of material, you demand them and then they charge you higher transportation costs because it's an urgent delivery or they may not have available right away. And they said that, okay, whenever we have available, we will provide you. No, so the flow of material would be smoother compared to if you are relying on the external party. And you also have a better quality control. Uh, if you have external vendor that they are um, providing you material, you have to rely on their quality. Whereas if you are producing yourself, your own raw material, you can control your quality, what quality you want, you can increase or decrease according to the needs of yourself and according to the needs of your customer and according to the needs of uh, the, the product itself, right? You can also earn profit by making your own product, but also if you, have, if you are producing excess raw material, you can sell it in the open market and you can make profits from that too. So you can have a profit of making and publishing books and selling books, but you can also have profits by selling raw material, which is pieces of wood to other you know, publishers or paper manufacturers or other uh, you know, uh, companies that require wood. So you can have profits from both. However, it comes with disadvantages too that, uh, you know, you can, uh, that becomes the advantages of using suppliers because suppliers enjoy the economies of scale. They have, they pull demand from various companies, from various resources. So therefore they produce in, in, in enormous quantities due to which they have economies of scale. So if they have forests, they are growing trees, they're growing trees, uh, you know, a lot more trees than you will grow for your own companies. That means the cost per unit for them will be lower or anything else, any material that they are providing. If they are only dealing with that particular um, product line or the raw material line and they are transferring that to many companies. So let's take an example of the tire manufacturing companies, right? Um, let's say that the General Motor manufactures their own tires. 
Now it'll be costly for General Motors to manufacture their own tires and only produce it for General Motors compared to if they buy tires from Goodyear or tires from you know, Bridgestone and any other company because those companies will, will be producing tires for many more companies. They'll be producing tires for Ford, with General Motors, with Toyotas, the Hondas, you name it. So they can, and they, can have, uh, they can enjoy the higher economies of a scale just because of the quantity they can produce. Remember, the fixed cost stays fixed within the relevant range, right? So as long as they're producing it in a relevant range and they're producing more and more, they can, they can reduce their cost per unit by producing in higher quantities, which if, in a, if you are doing a vertical integration, you may not be able to enjoy it because you may be able to produce in a limited quantity, at least not as much quantity as the supplier can produce, right? And then they can enjoy the higher quality at lower cost you know, the cost that you're going to incur to produce the tire for your own company will be a lot higher if you want to produce a quality, right? A lot less cost. The supplier can produce a tire for your company because they are producing for many companies and they can increase the quality at a lot lower cost because it is less costly for them to produce at the first place. Okay, so those are the benefits of, uh, you know, the vertical integration and in using supply. So our decision is what? Should I continue producing product in-house, right? Or insourcing or buy from external vendor or outsourcing, right? The erroneous assumptions we make is that if we discontinue producing in-house, all the costs are going to be eliminated, whether variable and fixed, right? And the only cost we are going to incur is the cost that the external vendor will charge on per unit basis, whether it's a per pound, whether it's a per kilo, or whether it's a per gallon or whatever the unit is. Or, you know, so whatever the, the um, vendor is going to charge us, that's the only cost we are going to incur. This is an erroneous assumption. Not necessarily all fixed and variable costs can be eliminated only variable costs can be eliminated that's tied to the product and fixed costs that are allocated fixed costs, right? Not the common fixed costs, allocated fixed costs may be eliminated. So for example, if you have a supervisor that handles that particular, um, you know, the production department where you were producing tires, maybe you can lay off that supervisor or, you know, um, then you can save the, the amount of salary that you are paying them. And that way, your fixed cost can be saved. That's the allocated fixed cost to that particular product line. However, there is a common fixed cost if you have already bought the machines, if you already have the facility, right, that's, that's bought for, um, you know, production of your um, tires as well as production of vehicles. Now, this cannot be changed in a short run. Most fixed costs cannot be changed in a short run. And if they cannot be eliminated, you may not be able to benefit from selling, from buying your product from external vendor. Okay. So let's evaluate that. Okay. So when you are making or producing in house, a variable cost should be considered, right? Fixed costs are irrelevant. Common fixed costs, not the allocated. Common fixed costs are irrelevant. Fixed costs will be incurred no matter if the product is discontinued in-house or, you know, made in-house and bought it from external vendor. You will incur that because in the short run, you cannot avoid that. Now, when you consider buying, you need to consider how much you will be paying for the product, so sales price, plus any additional cost they will be charge, charging you. So if they are charging you for shipment or they're charging you for any certification or anything, you need to consider those additional costs when you buy from external vendor. So let's start with the example. Z Corporation has been purchasing wireless modem for its desktop computers from We Corporation. We charge is $40 per modem. However, Z Corporation has excess capacity that can be utilized to produce wireless modem. Z estimates that following production cost per modem, direct materials 15, direct labor 19, manufacturing overhead 
which includes both variable and fixed manufacturing overhead. Therefore, it states here 40% is variable. So the total cost per unit is $44. If Z manufactures the modems, fixed cost will not be affected. Should Z make the modem in-house or buy from V Corporation? Now, if you just look at the cost structure provided here, it gives you $44 per unit, whereas V is charging $40. So if you have no idea about how the cost behave, you are going to accept the order of V Corporation because you will see that you know, they are charging you less than it costs you to produce. However, remember, the fixed cost, the common fixed cost cannot be eliminated, whether you produce the modem in-house or buy it from the external vendor. So in this case, the variable cost or the very manufacturing overhead includes 60% of fixed portion. That's $6 of $10 is fixed. Only $4 is variable. So let's solve this problem. So manufacturing overhead variable portion is $4 out of $10 and the fixed portion is $6. So we are only going to consider the $4 variable portion. Direct material 15, direct labor same 19, and variable manufacturing overhead is $4. That comes up with $38 variable manufacturing cost total, right? On In here, it was showing $44. $44 is not because regardless of whether you produce it in-house or buy it from V Corporation, you're still going to incur that six dollar of fixed manufacturing overhead cost so therefore if you buy if you produce it in-house you are incurring 38 dollar which is less than the 40 dollar cost of buying from the external vendor v corporation therefore the decision is to make the product in-house and again you can consider some subjective uh, issues and qualitative consideration that if the space can be used to produce something and make company even more profitable, then maybe yeah, you can discontinue uh, producing modem and then buy it from the external vendor V Corporation and use that space to produce something else that is more profitable. That's another consideration. But in case if the space cannot be used to produce anything or cannot be used to produce something as profitable as this, then you should continue producing modem in-house. In the differential format, that's how it looks like. If you purchase modem from uh, the external vendor, it's $40, right? And it's the differential cost of producing modem. So if you produce, the direct material will be $15, direct labor $19, variable MOH $4. So it will be $38. So differential cost would be $38 to produce and $40 is from purchasing. So there is a difference of $2 in net savings from manufacture. Therefore, you should manufacture modem in-house then buy from external vendor. And that completes this question. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.